This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is something entirely different or entirely new for my racing, and that is dirt. As one of the leading simulator companies of the world, iRacing has been known for their quality of sim for both road and oval racing. But dirt has been a long time request by the fans as it represents that grassroots level of racing that many Americans grew up upon. For many, dirt represents where it all began. Beyond the quality of sim racing, iRacing is also known for their depth of cars and tracks, but that took many years to build up and accomplish. With dirt being the third genre for my racing, it is starting off at that bottom and will take years to build up as well, but it does come with more than one car and one track. In fact, it comes with three different tracks and a handful of cars to choose from. In reality, there's plenty to test your skills and master the art of sideways driving and have a blast doing so. So let's talk about this new content that's available and see the new direction of iRacing. Now for today's show, this is not a review. If you know me, you know I'm very thorough, and that can't be done in just a matter of hours. But with this being such a triumphant moment for iRacing, I just want to take an opportunity to really take a look at this content and worry about a review or looking at it in more depth later when I have a little bit more time to master it and work on setup and other options and things that really might affect my opinion of the dirt racing from iRacing. So let's go ahead and start things off with the venues. And there are three to choose from out of the gate. Each of these tracks are half mile in length and each historically significant to the sport. But driving each of them couldn't be more different beyond that distance in common. For starters, there is Eldora in Ohio at the border of Indiana, the heart and soul of American racing. This track dates back to 1954 and is a banked clay oval with 24 degrees of banking in the corners and 8 degrees going down the straightaways. And this track is owned by none other than Tony Stewart himself. Then there is Williams Grove, which dates back to the late 30s and was built next to the family's amusement park in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. It is also a clay oval with very long straights and tight 180 degree turns on each end. And then finally comes Volusia, the baby of the group having been built back in 1968. It started off as a quarter mile track, but over the years it grew all the way up to that half mile length that it now exists in. But for many years it was actually paved before being switched back to dirt again back in 1997. It is dubbed the fastest half mile in the world and you will find out why when we get down to driving it. The new car models now available for the dirt genre of iRacing come in two different models with three different levels per car. For starters, we have the dirt late model. This is the classic short track oval car that is seen across the nation at your local track. The car is a purpose-built race car of steel tubing and fiberglass bodywork that looks like nothing you'll see on the road. The limited version starts things off with a 350 cubic inch V8 that produces 400 horsepower with a car weighing in at 2,250 pounds and capable of speeds of up to 160 miles per hour. The pro version of the Dirt Late model looks just like the limited but gets a huge boost of horsepower all the way up to 700 out of its now 358 cubic inch engine. And then topping off the late models is the Super Dirt Late model with a much larger 468 cubic inch motor that makes 850 horsepower and moves like a bat out of hell. And then come the kings of the dirt track world, the Sprint car. This is the Formula One car of the dirt oval world and they are known by four things. A giant wing on top, massive amounts of tire stagger, incredible speeds on tiny tracks, and a horsepower to weight ratio second to none. The Sprint cars start off with a 305 model in reference to its 305 cubic inch motor. This little V8 produces 458 horsepower, and when propelling a vehicle that only weighs about 1400 pounds, that is plenty. The second variation is the 360, and its 360 cubic inch motor produces 720 horsepower in that same tiny little body. But the beast of beasts of the motor racing world, the world of outlaws, the fastest oval racing car in the world is the 410 model. And the greatest show on the world of outlaws!
and now we are talking about a car with 892 horsepower, again, squeezed into a car weighing only about 1,400 pounds. These cars are nearly as wide as they are long, with a wheelbase of only 90 inches long, yet they are 78 inches wide. It's scary on paper, and even scarier on track, as it eats up half-mile tracks at breathtaking speeds. These are the cars and the tracks that many of the heroes of NASCAR learned their car driving skills and earned their reputations on. This new content, like most DLC that you're going to find, will set you back a little bit of money. Each of the tracks was going to cost you $11.95 per track. The cars are also $11.95 per car, with there being two, the late model and the sprint car, but you do get three models of each car, so it's $11.95 for three different cars if you think about it. This is all available as of today, March 29th, and in addition to those cars and tracks, there are going to be a couple of cars from the iRacing service that are converted to dirt track as well. You're going to have the Legends car and the Street Stock, which are really going to represent the bottom of the dirt racing ladder for the new iRacing dirt service. So now let's talk about driving these ferocious beasts and what it's like out on track. The late model cars are fast, they are heavy, and there is an art to driving these cars. But when it's done well, it is as elegant as ice dancing, just flinging mud and dirt instead of ice. The fast way around the track is sideways through the corners, but it's not as simple as just turning and letting the car swing around. There's an incredible amount of timing, and more importantly, faith, as you turn in what seems like way too early, and you let the car bleed off speed as it careens towards the inner barriers. But just as you think you will slam the inside, the car continues to slide past it, and now you question if you'll even hold onto the turn. A boost of the throttle, and if you can make traction, it will pull itself back into the driving line. And as you bring back the gas, you can hear the car struggling to gain rear end bite. Will it continue to swing wide towards the outer wall, or will it bite down hard and launch you back down the straights? You're constantly working the pedals, constantly sawing on the wheel, as the car seems to never drive straight. But it still somehow finds its line around these slippery dirt tracks. It takes practice, it takes skill, and it takes the ultimate confidence and knowledge of your equipment to turn for a wall only to nearly miss it going into the corners. These cars can be driven gently and in control, but the key to speed will be testing your bravery at each end of the track. Now let's talk about the sprint cars. Giant tires, giant wings, giant motors. Yes, we should all be afraid. With these being the equivalent to the Formula One cars of dirt, these are the machines that have been pushed to every limit to get the most out of a slippery small racing track. The sprint car is a roaring beast that attacks tracks with anger. You cannot drive this car gently. In fact, if you do, it might not even turn at all. You must meet its anger with aggression in order to show the car just to his boss. But it isn't always that easy, as its intentions are to fight you and the track right now. Once you have the confidence to drive it hard into the corner at speeds that don't quite seem possible, it is then that you can see what this car can actually do. It was built for this. This is its environment, and nothing else on earth can do it better. At this point, the car becomes easier to drive. But it's the timing, and that things start to happen so quickly that becomes the challenge. It's a blink of an eye, and the car has moved down the straightaways, and it's already time to turn again. As the laps get faster, you feel like you are always turning as the car really never quite straightens out all the way and again, you are already into the next corner. Miss your mark and you have missed the corner. Turn in too early and the inner wall comes at you so quickly. Despite its incredible ability, your margins for error have been removed and you are always accountable for what your wheel and pedal inputs are and doing anything wrong can be catastrophic. But after enough practice, the car is so predictable, so stable, and so fast, you will swear it is the fastest, most powerful car you have ever driven, certainly one of the most frightening. 
The dirt racing on iRacing is sure to add excitement to the service. It's definitely going to make the fans of dirt racing happy, and it's likely to make new fans of dirt racing because, quite honestly, it's hard to do this without getting a smile on your face. And it's such an accomplishment when you do get that timing right, and you come in blindly into that corner and somehow just barely kissing that apron along the inside and get it just right. It feels so good and it takes you back to things like when you were a kid. I mean, I think about racing, I think about dirt racing and I remember I had big wheel and sliding that thing around. I'm doing coaster brake slides on my BMX bike. Getting sideways, I think is just human nature. Certainly it's something we boys love to do and it's something that is just so fun out on the dirt track as well in these cars. So I've only been able to test these all alone and I can only imagine how cool or crazy it's going to be in a pack. You have multiple driving lines to choose from. You can put this thing all over and it's going to lead to some great inside outside racing. You're going to see guys protecting down low but finishing wide out of the corners. Meanwhile someone out starting out wide and finishing to the inside leading to a great drag race down the back stretch. It's going to be crazy and it's going to require confidence in your skills and confidence in your opponents to keep things under control. And with the dirt track genre being added to iRacing came with it another pro version of sports and its affiliation to sim racing. This is the exclusive online partner of World of Outlaws and perhaps that means we're going to see a dirt racing champion crown just like we've seen from our road and oval champions over the past few years. It's going to be really interesting to see how this partnership and the dirt racing aspect of iRacing grows in the coming months. So I hope you've enjoyed this preview of iRacing's new content, Dirt Track Racing. As I mentioned, this is not a review. I didn't get a chance to dive into setup. I really didn't get a chance to really perfect my driving lines, and I didn't have an opportunity to drive it with a full grid of cars. Plus, we don't know what the racing's really going to be like. Are we talking about heat races building up to a main event? I don't know. But I can tell you this, with it being this much fun, you can be assured there's going to be a lot more dirt track racing content from the Sim Pit. This is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the dirt track.